All right, so this is just practice solving exponential equations with our logarithmic rule. All right, so we have the following in logarithm. Again, round our answers to two decimal places. So we have 25 equals 3 raised to the t. So we want to solve for the exponent t. The only way to do that is to use a logarithm. Again, this is its entire reason for existence is to solve these equations. So remember, it's the log of the 25 side divided by the log of the base 3 equals the exponent. And again, you have to type it out exactly that, log of 25 divided by log of 3. You'll have to type out two logs, and then you find the approximate answer, which is 2.9299, which comes out 2.93. We round two decimal places. All right, the next example, 15,000 equals 1.5 raised to the t. So this would be one, if you look at this, this is going to be like a future value example. Um, but again, we're going to solve for t. So remember, when you solve for t, it's the log of the equal to side, the 15,000, divided by the base side, log of the 1.05, and that equals the t. And so again, you type it out exactly like that. So you take your log of 15,000 divided by your log of 1.05 and so it comes out to 197.08. Right, the next one I have to do a little bit of work. So this is a, an exponential function that we talked about in 3.2. So this would begin like, suppose I started out with 10,000 and I want to know how long it'll take it to grow to 35,000, right, my money, when I have a 4% growth rate. Well, you cannot use the equation yet. I have to have a equals b raised to the t. Right now, I've got a number in front of b. All right? And so the first thing you have to take care of is you have to get rid of the number in front. You have to solve for the b to the t. In this case, it's the 0 0.04, 1 0 0.04 raised to the t. So you have to get rid of the number in front. Well, it's multiplying, so to get rid of it, we divide it out. And so this side simplifies to 3.5. There's the A, and that side is 1.04 raised to the T. There's B raised to the T. Now I can use my rule. I can't use my rule in the beginning equation, but I can use my rule in the, this equation. Right now I've got an A equals a B to the T. And so my T is the log of A, which is 3.5, divided by the log of B, which is 1.04, and then my t comes out to be 31.94, 31.94. Can we assume it would be years? It didn't say years. But we're going to assume that this is a money growth one, so it's going to take about 32 years for 10,000 to grow to 35,000 if my interest rate is 4%, based on what we did on the previous cases, which actually is what we're going to do here in applications. All right, so we're going to do applications of exponential growth and decay, and we're going to do, again, similar questions that we did in 3.2 and then we're going to add to then being able to find time now. Now we can find time. All right, so the population of a city is growing at a rate of 3% per year, so it's an exponential rate of growth. We started out with 10,000. So remember, quantity equals the initial amount, 1 plus our growth rate raised to the time. Remember, the growth rate has to be a decimal. This is our initial quantity. You can use P instead of Q. And so my equation would be my future amount is my initial amount 1 plus my interest rate as a decimal raised to t and so this would be 1.03 raised to the t make sure I got all my zeros there alright so this is the equation we're going to use there's my exponential growth equation and so the first one is just a question that we, we did in the previous case this is t equals 5 so in 5 years what's my quantity so I take t Plug it into this equation. Take my, my initial population, 1.03 raised to the 5. And I'm going to round the whole person. 
on. So that's an old question. All right, round to the whole person. So the next question is the new one. How long? So we're looking for time. All right, how long? We're looking for the t part. We want to know the t part. We could not solve this until we had logarithms, right? We write our equation down. It's our 100,000. 1.03 raised to the t. We want to solve for t. Find t when our future value is 210,000. And so we're going to set our equation. So in for q is 210 equals 10,000, or sorry, 100,000. 1.03 raised to the t. Solve for t. Now, I can't solve it yet. Remember, I have to have a equals b to the t. Right now, I have a equals 100,000 times b to the t. I have to get rid of the 100,000, and so I have to divide this number first. So before I get started, I have to do that first so that I get an a on one side and a b to the t on the other side. All right, so this simplifies to 2.1, all right, that's the a, equals 1.03 raised to the t. Now I can use my logarithm rule. My logarithm rule is time equals the log of the a side, which is 2.1, divided by the log of the b side, which is 1.03. Right, and that will give me my, my time. All right, so that comes out to 25, so about 25 years. Yeah, 25.1. All right, so about 25 years. All right, next example. The value of account after t years is given by the equation. The balance equals 500 times 1.1 raised to the t. How long? So we're looking for time, right? How long the t value Will it take the account to increase to 900? So again, we started out with 500. This is how fast we're increasing. We want to figure out, well, the time it will take to increase 500 to 900, all right? So my future value, my balance is 900. I want to solve for t, time. All right, so take this equation, set it equal to 900 first. So 900 equals 500 times 1.1 raised to the t. Again, I cannot solve this yet. First thing I have to do is get rid of the 500 out front. So the first thing you do is divide out. All right, and I'm going to leave it the fraction. Again, always leave it exact. It does come out to uh, a nice decimal, but I'm just going to leave it the 9 halves or 9 fifths fraction. All right, so now I've got it. My A is 9 fifths. My b is 1.1 raised to the t, so now I can use my log rule. So it's the log of the a side, the 9 fifths, divided by the log of the b side, 1.1, and that solves for my time. It shouldn't take very long. Um, 6.2 years comes out. All right, let's do one more example. All right, so this is a decay example. Decaying, right? So this is a loss, so we're going to have to subtract the R, which is 0 0.05 in this case. So remember, I'm decaying, which means I'm losing 5%, so it goes into the formula as, in, as, a, as a subtraction. We take our quantity equals our initial amount, 1 minus R raised to the T. The initial amount is 100, so 100 times... 1 minus our 5% as a decimal raised to the t. So our equation is our future value equals 100 times 0.95, right? If I take 1 minus 0 0.05, that's 0.95 raised to the t. All right, the first question is a throwback. They gave us a time. We're just going to plug it into this equation. So it's 100 it's 0.95 raised to the 3, and so again, it should come out less than 90, or 100. Oh, 85.74, 85.74 grams. All right, so that's again an old question. The new question, how long, right? How long means time? I want to find T. That's what I have to solve for. It will take it to decay down to 12 grams. So we're going from 100 grams to 12 grams. So this should take a little while. 
right? Because I'm almost, I'm almost going, I'm losing 88 grams, right? And so the future value, the Q, is 12. Right? So we want to figure out how long it'll take 100 to decay down to 12. So 12 is what goes in for the Q equals 100 times 0.95 raised to the T. Again, I've got this 100 in front. I have to divide by that first. And so we get 0.12 is my A. 0.95 is my B raised to the T. And now I can solve for T. So T is the log of A, which is 0.12 divided by the log of B, which is 0.95. And again, it should take a while because we're decaying, we're losing most of it. So 41.3, so 41.3 hours. All right, so again, it takes a while. It takes 41.3 hours to decay from 100 down to 12 grams. All right, the last example or the last application of this type. Suppose that we know the half-life of cesium-137 is 30 years. Suppose we started with 90 grams, so there's our initial amount, which is 90. Uh, cesium-30, how many half-lives? So again, this is time. Will it take for there to be 10 grams left in the storage bowl? What is that in years? So first we're going to have the half. So this is going back to the half-life. So remember the half-life equation is the amount left equals the initial amount times one half raised to the how many half lives, right? That's the H part. All right, so we're solving for that first. We're solving for how many half lives there are. So amount left, initial amount, and again, we're gonna solve for H. All right, how many half lives are left? So the amount left, well, 10 grams is what's left. We started with 90 grams. It's one half raised to the H, so we're solving for H. So if we, I can't solve yet. First thing I have to do is divide by my 90. Again, I'm going to leave one ninth exactly. Always leave your fraction exactly equals one half raised to the H. Now I've got my A is one ninth. My B is one twelfth raised to the H. So to solve for H, it's the log of the A, one ninth divided by the log of the B, one half. H comes out to, and I'm just gonna round a couple decimal places, 3.17. Remember, that's the number of half-lives. So it's a little over three half-lives. So three times it's gonna be cut in half, plus a little more, the 0.17. That's the first one, all right? How many half-lives? The second part of this question is, well, what is that in years, right? It's Three times it's going to be cut in a half plus a little bit more. Right, the point, point 0.17 is a little bit more. So what is that in context of years? Well, I know it takes 30 years. So three of those would be three, three, three. So that's 90. Well, to figure that out exactly because you have the point 0.17, so you're going to figure out the years. You're going to take your half-life times the years. So 3.17 is the number of times it's cut in half. So 3.17 times 30, which is the, the half-life. Not years, half-life. And so it comes out to be 95.1 years. And it should make sense that it's 90 because three times it's gonna be cut in half. So three times, that means 30 plus another 30 plus another 30, that's 90. And then a little bit of extra comes from the, the 0.17. That's the 5.1 years extra that we get uh, to decay down to 10 grams. All right, so again, hopefully you understood that because there is one like that uh, on your homework. So hopefully you did understand it. All right, we'll stop there. We'll pick up the next set of notes in the next video.